So he could have technically been giving a compliment to these governors, depending on the definition you use and depending on how you view our ancestors. Hi everyone, my name is Annika Rose and welcome back to my channel where we talk about everything culture and communication related. Today we're going to continue our etymology and origin of words series talking about the word Neanderthal. Now you may have heard this word before in history class or anthropology class and then heard it again recently if you follow along with US politics and what Joe Biden says. Before we get started, I would like to remind you to please like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know that you think would enjoy it, as well as comment down below. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. Recently, US President Joe Biden said, And the last thing, the last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine, take off your mask, forget it. It still matters. Since that quote, Merriam-Webster has reported a 14,000% increase of the lookups of this word. So that's a lot. Of course, I'm going to talk about the origin of the word Neanderthal. I'm going to pretend I'm an anthropologist for a little bit and talk about some of our early ancestors, the species, and as well as the different definitions of the word Neanderthal in English. And then we're going to talk about how this word is used in the English language. Did Joe Biden use this word correctly? Can we use this word Neanderthal as an insult or as a compliment? Did it give justice to our ancestors? Spoiler alert, not really. The etymology of the word Neanderthal comes from a place name. This valley in Germany was named after Calvinist, theologian, and hymn writer Joachim Neander, who lived in this town from the year 1650 to 1680. Going into the etymology of Joachim Neander's name, Neander's grandfather had changed the name from the original German Neumann to Greek roots, and you got Neander, which comes from Neos, new, and Aner, man. So I just finished filming the Neanderthal video and I found this article on Edom Online and I really wanted to share the information that I learned about the etymology of Neanderthal and the last name. The reason why Joachim Neander's grandfather changed his name to Neander is, is because it was a sign of being a scholar that you weren't using the vulgar German, you were using Latin or Greek, and so it was a trend to change your name from German to Latin or Greek. And this is what we see with Joachim Neander's name. Tal means valley, so it literally meant valley of Neander. Another really cool fact that I learned from this article is that the word Thal from Neanderthal is also a root of the word dollar. It came to the English in the 1500s as the word dollar. So maybe I can do a video about the etymology of the word dollar because that is so cool. This place is in Germany near the city of Dusseldorf. It is called Neanderhöhl, which is German for a hollow or valley of Neander. Neanderthals were named after this valley because the first Neanderthal was found there in 1856. Before this valley was named Neanderthal, it was called Hundesklip and Das Gesteins, which literally means the dog's cliff and the stones in German. Pronunciation-wise, it is both correct to pronounce it Neanderthal or Neanderthal. When I was looking at videos, um, I heard both pronunciations. Merriam-Webster considers both pronunciations correct and normal. Neanderthal is a bit closer to the, the German pronunciation. As with many words, there is a very specific, more, I don't know, scientific definition of the word. And then there is a more colloquial use of the word that we might use in everyday speech. That we obviously got from the original use of the word, but it's been watered down throughout the centuries. Let's first talk about our ancestors, the Neanderthal, when talking about this word, and then we can go into Neanderthal in a more colloquial way that you might use in like a literature essay, not just an anthropology essay. 
Um, if you want to skip this anthropology part, there are timestamps in the description. But I wouldn't recommend that because you're going to miss out. Homo Neanderthalus lived during the Ice Age, so 120,000 to 35,000 years ago. They looked like this, apparently, with a stocky build, elongated skull, and prominent brow ridge. They are considered one of the later species in the stages of human evolution. They were hunter-gatherers, whereas Homo sapiens are associated with settled life, producing their own food through agriculture and domestication. But recently, we've realized that Neanderthals were a lot more developed. Originally, anthropologists believed that they were quite early humans, not very developed, quite brutish. But on further research and looking through the fossil record, they realized that our ancestors were a lot more intelligent than we originally thought. But hold on to that first belief of the anthropologist because it will come in handy later. The Neanderthals seem to have been quite compassionate, creative, and intelligent. They were as big-brained and anatomically developed as Homo sapiens. Through the fossil record, we can see many of the tools that they developed, as well as proof that they were quite caring for one another. They took care of their sick, they likely buried their dead, they used fire, and the older variety of Neanderthals used ornamentation. There's also proof that they had language abilities and used symbolism, which is super, super cool. They did live in groups, and it looks like they took care of one another when they were sick or dying. They also lived for quite a long time. People think they weren't a very strong species, but they had a lasting legacy and were around for a lot longer than Hobo than Homo sapiens has been around. So I just bought this book and I'm gonna read what I read about the Neanderthals just from the introduction. So here's the picture. Humans in Europe and Western Asia evolved into Homo neanderthalensis, literally man from the Neander Valley, popularly referred to simply as Neanderthals. Neanderthals bulkier and more muscular than us sapiens were well adapted to the cold climate of Ice Age Western Eurasia. This first definition with Homo neanderthalensis contrasts with the second definition of Neanderthal in English. This definition is a person with extremely old-fashioned and outdated ideas and opinions. And both figuratively and informally, it was used a crude and brutish person. This definition likely came about when ancestors knew very little about the species and just assumed that they were didn't care about one another and weren't really progressive. We can assume that President Biden was using this term to describe what he thought as the unscientific and irresponsible actions of the governors of Texas and Mississippi. But the ironic thing is when we look at the Neanderthals as a species, they seem to be quite progressive, quite, quite compassionate humans. So although the president did use the term according to dictionary definition, the second definition, we could interpret it as him giving a compliment. Now I know that this isn't what he was trying to communicate, but the irony is pretty entertaining. So he could have technically been giving a compliment to these governors, depending on the definition you use and depending on how you view our ancestors. That is the important part of defining our terms in communication. What do you think? Do you think President Biden used this term correctly? Should the word Neanderthal be used as an insult? Or is it actually secretly a compliment? Thanks for watching.